Hello everyone. This is a no damage, no box, S rank playthrough of Resident Evil 3 Remake on hardcore difficulty. This pandemic has spread faster than any disease in modern history. Angry mobs roam the city, burning buildings. Authorities are bracing for more rioting tonight. He was knocked unconscious. He had some blood. A citywide emergency has been declared. The CDC has quarantined the lower midwestern region of the U.S. Officials can't say. Commitment. Honesty, integrity, these are the core values that create the foundation for Umbrella. It's this foundation that will continue to build a brighter future for all of us. A no commentary version of this video can be found in the pinned comments in the comments section below. So to preface, this uh, run was actually done without using any shop items. Just to sort of show what is possible out of the box. I realized at the end of my previous hardcore run, I said that I would uh, have Inferno ready, but I'm still working on that. Who could that be? Hello? Jill! Are, are you okay? Brad, is that you? Listen, you gotta get out of there! What are you talking about? I don't have time to explain! You gotta get out of there right now! Alright, let me grab my- ah!
Pretty sure this is about to be everyone's least favorite part of the video game. Jill? Over here! Brad! You okay? What was that thing? Damned if I know. But right now it's got a hard on for the only two stars left in town. You and me. I'm not sticking around. Just look around you. The longer we wait, the more screwed we are. How did this all happen so fast? I don't know. One fucked up thing always leads to another. It's like Arclay on steroids. Hey! Hey, wait! Down here! Damn it! I've gotta be dreaming. Could this many people be infected? Brad! Here they come! In here! There's so many. Gotta be careful when turning. Sometimes a zombie can just like bust out and bite you and kill you. We can just straight up ignore that zombie. I think if you head to the right of the fire hydrant, the Jill doesn't uh, flinch whenever the sign falls. Thought I saw something like that. Also shoot uh, shoot the doors on the trailer a few times. And like Dario has like some extra dialogue maybe. I'm probably mistaken there. game going on here. A little dash past the zombie on the ground too. That's pretty much the uh Come on. last thread in the whole intro section. This whole point in time is just a glorified cutscene. Damn it. It's my 
turn, bitch! Easy, lady. I got you. Who are you? What are you doing? Name's Carlos, and I'm saving you. Come on. Let's get you someplace safe. Not gonna lie, the way they introduced Carlos in this game was pretty badass. I think we're in the clear. Hope so. We've been bringing survivors here. Here where? My guys have converted some subway cars into a shelter. It's safe. I'm fine. Personal space. Okay, I get it. Let's go. Oh, come on. Who's the dipshit to close this? Sorry, we're gonna have to go around. Hey, what do you know about that monster? Nothing. I've never seen anything like it. But it's no zombie. It knows what it wants and won't stop till it gets it. Don't you like that in a man? No, thanks. He's all yours. <laughs> Listen. I promise you're in good hands. I'm with the Umbrella Biohazard Countermeasure Service. UBCS for short. Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? You guys are the ones who caused all of this. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you talking about? Well, you don't have to trust me, but I'm going to the shelter. You coming? Come on, it's this way. Captain, this fine young lady could use our help. Carlos, you didn't even think to ask fine young lady her name? She is an elite operative of RPD, Special Tactics and Rescue Service. Her name is something Valentine. It's Jill. Nice to meet you, Jill. I am UBCS, platoon leader Mikhail Viktor. My team was sent here to rescue civilians. Right. How's that going for you? The city is completely cut off, isolated. Most of the hundred thousand civilians will wind up dead. Uh, correction, undead. My platoon has suffered serious losses. Just keeping them alive is more than I can manage. Well, you can thank your corporate overlords for that. Yes. Well, we are doing all we can. If we can get this subway train moving, we can evacuate some survivors. But we need help. My men cannot do this alone. I'm in. But I am on their side, not yours. Oh, hey. It's cool. We all want the same thing. Thank you, Jill. All right, super cop. Here you go. We can use this to stay in contact. I know what a radio is. Okay, first things first. We need to get you geared up. Head up to street level. 
find supplies there. All right. So now that we're at the real start of the game. Jill, it's me again. You topside yet? Working on it. So what's the plan? The old tank's got me clearing the tracks. You might get the subway infrastructure back online. And how do I do that? Let's start by restoring power. I'll navigate you to the substation once you hit the main road. Copy that. Let's do this fast. There's a couple of gunpowders right over there, but they are wholly unnecessary. Let's just not bother with them. More survivors. We've got to get that train moving. I'm just going to take the long way around this zombie. So... Resident Evil 3 takes place 24 hours before Resident Evil 2 in the first half, and the second half is 24 hours after Resident Evil 2. Just mentioning that because that is a question that pops up a lot. You just bulldoze right through these guys, but just kind of try to stay to the left so that the zombie just like tries to launch forward instead of launching to the side to grab us. We can knife that box, grab that gunpowder there. Carlos, I've reached the main avenue. Which way do I go? See a big transmission tower? That's the substation. You'll have to circle around through an alley to your right to get there. You mean the alley that's on fire? Maybe. Surely a tall drink of water like yourself can put out a few flames. <sighs> Fuck you. Take a nice wide line around these guys. As the uh, hidden DA value increases, the aggro range of the zombies also increases. We're going to head over to these catwalks here. Uh, DA is a hidden value. DA, or difficulty adjust adjustment, is a hidden value that uh, basically the better you do at the game, the harder the game gets, and vice versa. My code here is uh, 918, but that's because I'm playing on a pre-release version of the game. Capcom gave me the game a week early, which is why I was able to hammer out that uh, no damage run like so quickly after release. But uh, since uh, since the since I was given a copy of the game, the code changed to nine three seven. But uh, I recorded this footage before I patched the game, so I'm just gonna go in here to grab the high grade gunpowder and some bullets. Get around the yellow vest zombie. That zombie is uh, just busy running into walls and crap, so we can just run right around him or dodge around him if we need to. Once we get in here, we're just going to be doing uh, focus shots. So I'll tell you a little bit about zombie mechanics here. Uh, when a zombie falls, if you knife a zombie and it twitches like that, you can see a, you can see a response. Like if the zombie actually has like has like a reflex response whenever you uh, whenever you smack it then that's when you should be getting away and pop a couple more shots into its head until it like reaches out like oh, and then it dies zombies never try to pull a fast one on you more than once so if you check to see if the zombie's dead and it is in fact dead well, if you check to see if the zombie is dead and he's alive, then you quote unquote kill it one more time. It'll be it'll be dead. It'll be dead for good. So there's only like two cycles to each zombie. Before we move on, we're going to pop this barrel. We have no more use for it other than to just clear a safe passageway between here and the uh, railway station. Gotta put this out. We're gonna use the pose over here. There. 
the order I've been picking up items, the hose was conveniently in slot 5, meaning that uh, you can walk right across here and grab the bolt cutters. Is someone in here? But we're not going to advance the game quite so soon. We're going to actually go ahead and uh, make our way back towards the railway station, or the railway uh, office, I should say, so that we can pick up the shotgun. You can clear that whole section of the game with a handgun, and it's not too hard, but I would still recommend the shotgun, especially if you're trying to avoid hits. As far as I'm aware, zombies cannot three cycle. There was a zombie that I left alive in that storage area just now. I'd actually recommend that you kill him. So we don't got any lockpicks yet. I don't bother to unlock every single padlock in the game, but I will mention where those said padlocks are so that if you're trying to get the uh, achievement for unlocking everything, you can go and unlock them yourself. But there's a padlock in this room. So whenever you get the lockpick, remember that. We're just not going to mess around with this guy. We're just going to shoot him in the face. But I just wanted to check with my knife to see if he was alive. Because if he doesn't decapitate, then there is a chance that he is alive. By the way, the requirements for S rank in this game... Or rather, I should say in hardcore mode... the the ranking requirements are different from difficulty to difficulty. In assisted mode, rather in all difficulties, you have to do the game in under five saves. In assisted mode, your par time is two hours and 30 minutes. In standard mode, it's two hours. In hardcore mode, it's one hour, 45 minutes. In nightmare, it's two hours. And in inferno mode, it's two hours. So Hardcore's got the uh, tightest time requirement here. Can you see us? Uh, yeah, careful, careful. Come on, don't look at me like that, all right? I'm not an okay, no, 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 wait, please! <sighs> what the fuck? He was infected. He might have been infected. Oh, stars this soft. I wonder so many of you dead. And what are you, UBCS, killing your own people? He would have turned. There's your sense of self-preservation. Go back to the subway station. We don't need a bleeding heart like you getting in the way. So we're going to wait it out here, and as soon as one of the dogs gets really, really close, like danger close, we can pop the generator and knock them down. And then after that, we can make a clean break over to the, uh, over to the power station. Once we come in here, we're just going to do headshots, just knock every zombie out of the way. We don't even need to kill these guys, just knock them out of the way. Probably would have been better for me to shoot that zombie in the head, but because it was not uh, because it was not that big of a deal to raise the gun to his head, and just raise it at his legs because it was like shoulder height right there. Due to the force damage in this cutscene, I grabbed the green herb. 
you basically have to use that green herb no matter what. So due to the extreme RNG of this section over here, this is where I recommend you all make your first save. Is right here. So if you take a hit in the future, you just reload from that typewriter. Going around the corner here, I'm going to pop the generator in order to kill that first Drain Demos. There's three Drain Demos on the map right now. I like to lure that one out from around the corner and pop the generator in order to kill him too. Just because of how efficient it is, ammo-wise. As far as areas which have the most challenge. I'd say this is one of them, flat out. You can shoot these guys through the walls over here, and they actually can't get you here. This is probably like one of the only safe zones in the entire area. There's always going to be handgun ammo in that box. This is also a good place to uh, stand your ground and kill Drain Demos as they come around the corner and some such. Because they actually can't uh, follow you on the ceiling. They would have to be, uh, they would be forced to go on the walls before you can kill them as long as you back up to the ladder. Because there is no ceiling in this area. But once we uh, curve around here, you can also hear the music as... Uh, Less intense, which means there's no more Drain Demos on the map. Once you hear the creepy music start up again, that's when they're back. Sometimes if you're lucky, you can get a third Drain Demos, which is why I always aim above those two whenever they pop out of that wall there. After this, I always uh, make sure to zap that generator for good measure because you never know if you're going to kill one around the corner. Pretty handy. The music stopped being intense again. Every time you hit one of the breakers, uh, more Drain Demos will spawn. So we got to keep an eye out. I just got those two to body block each other. If they get too close to you, that's when you want to pull out your shotgun. That's pretty much the whole reason why I got the shotgun up to this point. You don't even really need the shotgun, but still doing it anyway, because it just makes it that much safer. Safety is the name of the game. Except that. That wasn't very safe at all. Or that. I actually got insanely lucky there. Okay, all that leaves is the main power switch. If that happens, pull out your shotgun. Enjoy that. Carlos, it's Jill. I've restored power to the subway. 
Nice going. Next up is the traffic control system. It should be in the subway company's offices. Unfortunately, all I can tell you is that it's somewhere in the area. You don't even know what building? Oh, that's helpful. Thanks, partner. I try. Not your partner. So with the exception of uh, this high-grade gunpowder over here, I generally try to not mix up uh, shotgun shells if I can help it, because holding out for magnum rounds is generally a better strategy. Nemesis is going to bust out the wall here, and hopefully he hooks and he uh, gets caught on the dumpster over there. We gotta occasionally look back to make sure that he's uh, not about to dash at us. But he did that time. And if you zap the generator, then he'll be disabled. Then we can squeeze right by that uh, Michonne looking zombie alive. right there. It's after me. What? Run! Come back to the station! Not until I get traffic control online. You can also unlock that locker, and that has a first aid spray. So next up, we're going to curve to the left, and Nemesis is going to spawn right over there. And we want him to come back this way, knock these zombies down, and then we're going to blow up that barrel, and uh, that will deplete all 8,000 of his HP. Somehow that zombie survived that blast. I'm impressed. Uh, but in that, sur in that supply case is going to be an extended mag. You can see I'm at zero ammunition for my handgun right now. So I combine it and I get a full 33 bullets if I do that. So as a general rule, wait until your mag is empty, then load it up. We're not going to do anything else except go to the Kite Bros Railway offices right now. Because while Nemesis is down, he won't chase you, he won't do anything. And he stays down for about 30 seconds. If you try to do any more exploration, then he's going to cock block you everywhere else. So don't Carlos, fuck around. In the room. Now what? Nice. Now you gotta plot out a route. Okay, give me a sec. Just go to the railway offices, shoot the zombies in the way. Don't fuck around. Now we got shotgun shells. Alright, where are we headed? train is stopped at Redstone Street. We need to reach Fox Park Station. Can you program that in? Hey, I'm Supercop. Consider it done. Valid route confirmed. Carlos, it's me. I finished inputting the subway route. Chill, you are amazing. Tough as nails, too. Hurry back to the station. We'll make sure the subway's ready to depart. <laughs> that puzzle never changes the solution. Got to shoot that uh, nemesis parasite in the face. Then we'll blow up that barrel. It should kill the zombie there, but also take away most of the HP from this uh, from this uh, nemesis parasite. By the way, a thing about nemesis parasites that is uh, very handy to know. Obviously, when their heads melt, they die, but you can actually shoot them in the side of the head, and it will still register damage if they're protecting their core. So if you see that, try to get around to their back, but you don't even have to be like fully towards their back. You can shoot it in the in the side of the head closer to the back. Basically, the entire back is like a hitbox. Gotta shoot Michonne. Come on, Michonne. Get out of there. Then we're going to shoot the barrel. Get them out of the way. We're not using that barrel for anything else. Take those shotgun shells, and then we're going to make our way back through the donut shop. But not before we hit up the save room to pick up a couple of extra goodies. So in a no-box run, you have to do everything in a specific order if you want to get the things that you want to get. And do it in a timely manner, especially if you're trying to go for S rank on top of that. Wait for Nemesis to walk up, zap, and then another grenade.
I decided to discard my handgun bullets here since I have a full magazine with 33 handgun bullets. It's like, what do I need those extra handgun bullets for? And the answer is really not a whole lot at this point in the game. I'd say the only uh, section that was particularly uh, that was particularly handgun bullet consuming was the drain demos, but it's better to get rid of that and not have your inventory choke. We'll throw away the bolt cutters since the game says they're now useless, and uh, we're going to combine apparently to get more shotgun shells. I thought I was uh, mixing up magnum rounds, but. I guess I was at such a choke for shotgun shells that I just needed more shotgun shells, which makes sense. It's not like we get the Magnum until like the second half of the game anyway. That's more of an Inferno mode strat. So after picking the lock, we'll go in here. There's the third fancy box, and Nemesis is still down, by the way. So we're just going to, as quickly as we can, get back to the train station. Decapitate Michonne over here by Michonne. Top zombie. And then there's going to be a, an alpha parasite here. We just have to get to the shutter as quickly as we can, because if we do, then the parasite will miss us altogether. Now we're going to open all the boxes and use them in order to get some much needed upgrades, especially another side pack. So we get a grenade, tactical stock for the shotgun, and a side pack. The grenades are very useful. We don't just want to use them willy-nilly because Jill only gets like five of them ever. And they do absurd amounts of damage, even more so than the grenade launcher. So we'll unlock this box, grab some more shotgun shells. Q cutscene. Nice job, Super Cop. I'm impressed. We back in business? Yeah, mostly. But we need 30 to 40 minutes to finish maintenance. Nikolai! How are we doing? The town's crawling with those freaks. No chance of fighting our way out of the city. Why is she here? She's helping get the trains running again. Bad time to start getting dead weight, friend. She's unreliable. Can't pull the trigger when it counts. Hey, take it easy. <laughs> She'll get you killed. Sorry about that. Everyone's a little worked up. Oh, come on. Not again. He's after. Hey. I'll buy you some time. Hey, wait. Wait, Jill. No. Damn it. Come on, you creepy ass stalker. You want stars? I'll give you stars. You should probably turn the camera just to make sure that Nemesis is going to punch you. Shooting the generator there is optional on pretty much all difficulties. Just worry about dodging the punches. Uh, you can pick up some handgun bullets there if you need them. But, uh,. I'm going to wait for Nemesis to turn. And when he does that, we get another supply case. Nemesis drops four supply cases, and he only drops them during specific events. And set events are as follows. The first time you run from him in downtown Raccoon City, that is after the power station. So between the power station and the Kite Bros Railway Station, he will drop one item. Between the Kite Bros Railway Station and the subway station, he will drop another. In the subway station, he will drop a third. And when you're running away from him while he's got the rocket launcher on your way back to Carlos, he will drop a fourth. Carlos, do you copy? Carlos? Oh, shit. Oh, I need to find another way out. 
Some handgun bullets and shotgun shells in there. Basically, anytime you're low on handgun bullets, you can just reload your gun and just like throw out the rest of your handgun bullets during a no-box run. I'm definitely burning this close. There's a quick grenade right there. First encounter with Hunter Gamma. Sliding out of the pipe right here. We'll toss that. Boom. And then when he opens his mouth again, we'll hit him with shotgun shells. So it takes about three, two shotgun shells. You can do a third shotgun shell if you want. But for the final shot, I just decided to finish him off with handgun bullets. Because three handgun bullets is going to do less damage to a zombie than a full-on shotgun blast. Gonna combine that, examine the box in order to get shotgun shells. Combine those, and now we got three inventory slots free. Reloading my shotgun just in case I need to ditch the shotgun shells later. We got the grenade launcher and some explosive B, which we are going to mix into flame rounds in a second. With an explosive A later in the sewers. I mapped my grenade launcher to down arrow, fourth slot, because the knife is pretty useless from this point on. Now that we have a shotgun, which decapitates zombies in one shot, and an overabundance of handgun bullets, we're pretty good to not have to use the knife. After using the uh, flame rounds, a flame round, you can uh, finish off a Hunter Gamma with one more shot. Next to this body over here, there's some shotgun shells. Hunter Gamma slides out, flame round slides in. So we'll reload, we'll ditch the handgun bullets that we got there because we need an inventory slot free in order to reload the group, the flame rounds we just got. Now we got an explosive A. We'll combine that with the grenade launcher, make some flame rounds, load the rest of them into the grenade launcher. That's pretty much what we need flame rounds for is just for this... Uh, this whole section here. I'm not going to bother with the high grade gunpowder down here. The next item on the chopping block of our inventory gets too full is going to be shotgun shells. So trying to use shotgun shells when I can, if I need to. So on Hardcore, yeah, these guys always survive by like a sliver of health whenever you use the flame rounds. For this guy, we don't need to uh, kill him because we can just scoot right past him. Don't got to worry about him. We'll put the battery pack in here. We're going to encounter another Hunter Gamma as soon as we exit the door, go up the stairs here. We don't even really have to kill this one. Just got to be uh, conscious of where the Hunter Gamma is going to pop up 
because he always pops up directly in our way. And also this one likes to stick his head through doors and some such. Trying to head back to get him to jump back into his little kiddie pool. I ran that way in order to bait him out that way. So now we can head over here, put the battery pack in, grab the goodies inside. Got an explosive A, which uh, we're going to mix for some grenade rounds later. Also, if you uh, once you grab the items, don't head out the door yet because that is going to happen. The music is going to stop. The game is trying to troll you. Don't do it. Listen to see if there's any like slurping noises outside the door. If there are, stay inside. Wait for him to get bored and go away. Before we proceed, we got to grab the battery pack. Otherwise, we're going to have to run around this Hunter Gamma to get back, grab the battery pack. We're going to bait him down that way, and then we're going to run over towards this ladder. And that's it for Hunter Gammas. Can you hear me now? Jill. Oh, thank God. Everything okay? Yeah, I'm alive. I lost him. Great. The subway's ready to go. We'll leave as soon as you make it back. You can shoot that zombie in the head, but on hardcore you can just avoid him. It can use weapons. We're gonna head into this door over here. There's gonna be an explosive A. We're gonna combine that with the explosive A that we got a little earlier or to get some grenade rounds, some explosive rounds. It actually calls them explosive rounds in this game. I gotta get out, quick. Also, in case you're wondering what I'm doing with the aiming over and over again when I'm on the stairs, I should have mentioned this like way earlier, like, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes ago. That actually lets you move up the stairs a little faster. This is not a speed run. But I just do it to shave small amounts of time here and there, because if it is an S rank, you know, you might as well. So that, that way you can afford more time whenever you fuck up later. Really, it's just habit for me at this point. That's why I do it. It's not like I'm saving any compelling gameplay by not doing it. If you're having trouble stair skating in Resident Evil 3 Remake, by the way, uh, change your run type to hold. Because uh, for some reason in Resident Evil 3 Remake, as opposed to Resident Evil 2 Remake, uh, changing your uh, run button type to hold will prevent you from raising your gun whenever you are holding your run button. This is where we're making our second save, so... On to part three of the video. We're loading up uh, explosive rounds into the grenade launcher. All right, let's do this. Grab some shotgun shells, and then we're gonna wait for Nemesis to stop using his flamethrower. We're going to wait for Nemesis Flamethrower to overheat, so we're just going to stand right here. There is a possibility that the wood here will catch on fire if he aims away from the generator. So try not to... Try not to mess up there. Then we're going to shoot three explosive rounds. We're going to get under his 
under his tank and fire three shots, then fire or then throw a grenade, then grab another pack of explosive rounds here. And while we're waiting, we're going to load up the grenade launcher and then swap back to the handgun. Whenever he comes over here, we're going to throw another grenade. Boom. And then a shotgun. And then a grenade. Actually, you should do hand grenade, explosive round, and then shotgun. Because Nemesis will swag step your grenades if he's, like, able to move. Bastard's dead. Good. Fuck him. What were you thinking? Turning yourself into bait. You could have been killed. Don't start. I did what I had to. I know. And thanks. The subway's ready to go. Hurry back. It should be known that uh, Nemesis on the rooftop is actually a pushover, even on Inferno difficulty. If you have the right strat. Basically, proper application of hand grenades does him in pretty fast. Before we head over to Kendo's gun shop, we're going to drop down into the RPD garage over here. Grab the high-grade gunpowder. Make our way back out. There's no uh, parasites here or nothing. You don't gotta worry about dodging anything. Just take wide angles around the zombies and we're good. Straight to the gun shop. There's an explosive B and an explosive A. We will combine those in order to get flame rounds for Nemesis fights later. Don't move! Shit, chill. Kendo. You're all right. Yeah, all all right to stretch. Sorry, I got a little jumpy there. Didn't know quite what to expect. No shit. Look, we're using the subway to get people out of town. You in? Subway. Well, that's good thinking. When we get out, there's going to be a lot to do. We could use a man of your skill set. What's wrong? Nothing. Just, uh, just bad timing is all. Well... Look, um, don't worry about me. I'm gonna make other arrangements, okay? You better. You're the best gunsmith around. Oh, no. <laughs> don't do anything stupid. Oh, that's, that's your job, right? <laughs> Take care, Jill. I'm gonna combine those. Combine the uh, barrel with the shotgun. Gives us an extra... Two shotgun shells, by the way. <laughs> two shells on the any alpha parasites over here. As soon as we see this one, we gotta start shooting immediately. Otherwise, he's going to fling himself at us. Basically, whenever you hear the uh, whenever you hear the the bug chittering at you, then you either have to shoot it or you have to use a dodge action. Any other way, and you're gonna you're gonna take a hit. So, personally, I like to use the shotgun to just like knock them into hit stun, get around them that way. Rocket launch 
Master? Really? Little known fun fact, you can actually uh, walk there and Nemesis will miss like two rockets before hitting you with the third one. But I'm just like fucking dodging rockets like raindrops over here. Whenever we get over to this alley, we're going to have to do a couple of perfect dodges if, we, uh, if we'd been running this whole time. Still looking for consistent ways to manipulate Nemesis here. Nemesis will drop one more item in just a moment. After the uh, giant Mr. Charlie head rolls, we just throw one more grenade and he will drop some flame rounds. So pay attention to that. He'll drop one more box and that box contains flame rounds. Get out of here. Carlos, I know we didn't get off to a great start, but thanks for the save. Hey, you saved my ass first. You're a hell of a lot braver than me. Well, what matters is that we can get everyone out of the city now. Yeah. You'll be safe. What about you? Not from the sound of it. I won't be catching the train. Why not? No, there'll be new orders. If it means I can help save the city, it's fine by me. Good work. Your reputation is well deserved. Get inside. The subway's about to leave. Carlos, Tyrell, you have your orders. You need to go back out into the city and find Nathaniel Bart. This isn't the last ride out of town, right? Do not worry. Once the civilians are safe, the train will be back. It's all right. You're going ahead. 
But I'm not gonna die on you, leave you in a cold, cruel, Carlosless world. Okay. You'll need to find this scientist. His vaccine research could save us all. You see? You're learning. The only life that matters is your own. Good luck. Let's go! You don't really think a pencil pusher like Barnett is still alive, do you? I have it on good authority. Bye. Are you worried about teammates? Or something else? Funny how brainless zombies can ambush a platoon like that. Funny the gate was locked. Don't you think? <laughs> How is this fucker not dead yet? Just no, they're gone. Come, this way. Nikolai, what are you doing? It's not after you. <laughs> Get off my train, shit bird! Oh, it's been a while. Subway's gotta be clear of the city by now. Along with your hot date? Nah, but she's not like that. Hell, she's not like anybody. <clears throat> All right, keep your head screwed on, Romeo. This is the police station. You sure? It looks like a cemetery to me. I got this fucker. Come get some. So while we're waiting for Tyrell to unlock the door, we're just going to cap Brad, get his ID card. These stars. That could be useful. Where'd that cop go? Don't know, don't care. We got a job to do. If our intel's still worth a damn, then Bard's in the Star's office. Let's find him and take him into custody. Custody? I thought this was a rescue. I don't think I was supposed Carlos, to pick up that side pack. I've located the Star's office. Remember, Bard had access to Umbrella's darkest secrets. He knows we'll try to keep him under our thumbs. So this search and rescue mission is really more like find and detain. Hmm. Right. Good to know. I'll open the shutter so you can get through. You stay here and find out what's been going on here at the station. Call you if I find anything. Hey! Be careful. Yeah. You too, man.
We'll use Brad's card to open up that box. Get some assault rifle rounds. What the hell was that thing? I actually really like how Carlos's trip uh, through the go. RPD just like just like sort of gives a little bit of backstory on like some of the things that uh, you would have seen as Leon or Claire in Resident Evil 2 remake. We're gonna shoulder butt our way past that zombie whenever he bashes open the door. He probably doesn't even have to shoulder butt past him on hardcore. There's something real nasty in here. I don't know what it is. Something nasty. Alright. I'll take a look with the cameras. Watch your six. So after we unlock here, we're going to head backwards between these two vending machines and uh, we're going to use Carlos's assault rifle to take out all these zombies. We can just do body shots, it's fine. The zombies will never ride, will never be up on their legs more than twice. They got two, like, two phases to them. That female zombie on the ground was already in phase two. That zombie got up again. So once they're all down, gonna reload the assault rifle, do a quick body check. We see anything twitch. We backpedal and we kill it. Got the assault rifle scope right here, which allows us to hit enemies with 100% accuracy. We still got to pause if we're going to do focus shots, but at least our uh, bullets aren't going to go willy-nilly with the assault rifle anymore. Just had to stab once or twice just to make sure I wasn't seeing him twitch or anything. The code here is the same as it is in RE2 Remake, just 9, 15, 7. down. He twitched. His leg twitched. So pulling out our handgun. Now he's dead. Kind of fucked up shooting cops. Carlos, the star's office is up ahead. Copy that. Before we move on upstairs, we're going to open the locker here. By the way, uh, I've been getting a lot of comments about skipping the radio calls, and it's actually slower to skip the radio calls because if you leave the radio playing and you just walk while the radio is playing, then the timer pauses and you can actually get to where you need to go and save time on the timer. So don't skip your radio calls. You're wasting time. After we get the key, we want to walk to the armory, and the codes are 104, 106, and 109. So now we can open this, grab the battery. By the way, in case you were wondering about the side pack that I picked up earlier in the main hall, I picked that up entirely on accident. I'm pretty sure that was a New Game Plus side pack that I had bought in the store, so I apologize for that. But you can uh, definitely use that towards your no item box run if you want. Carlos, I've hit a dead end of the terminal here. Gotta head your way. 
Copy that. So next up, we're going to equip a flash grenade, and we're going to Gotta move. get ready. So check this out. Zombie Merking 101. We're going to throw a flashbang, right? And uh, flashbangs proc beyond the walls, so all the zombies in the room are going to be stunned, and then we can mash the space bar on the police officer zombie, like right next to the police officer zombie. He's got to be directly to Carlos's right. Then Carlos will just uh, haymaker the police officer zombie and the zombie that busts in through the room. And that's how you get past that section. No harm, no foul. Go straight for the star's office. Don't get anything else. It's not worth it. Dr. Bard. Oh, thank God. Do you know how long I've been trying to reach somebody? Don't worry, we're gonna get you out of there. Just tell me where you are. I'm trapped in a goddamn hospital, surrounded by every kind of abomination. Look, just send in stars. They're gonna know what to do. No, negative. RPD's overrun, too. Then figure it out! Umbrella's gone crazy. They're killing all the researchers. I am the only one who knows how to make the vaccine to stop the zombies. So you can either sit there with your dick in your hand or send... Send somebody who's capable of getting me the hell out of here. I like him already. Yeah, you would. You heard what he said. And we can't turn him over to the company. That's not our call to make. That's Mihail's call. And I'm gonna check the computer, see if I can trace the doc's location. This will take some time. Look around, see if you can find anything useful. The last place you can use the Stars card has some assault rifle ammo. Yeah, what's up? Derailed. Was anyone hurt? Jill? Ah, oh, shit. Wait, what? Jill! Jill, what happened? Jill, come in! T, I gotta go. Do what you gotta. I'll take care of Bard. Get rid of the extra shotgun shells, like I said, that was next on the chopping block. And this is where we're going to make our third save, is before the Nemesis boss fight. This next save is going to... Let us get all the way through the Nemesis boss fight and the Carlos section of the hospital coming up. Really, you just have to headshot two zombies because the pellet spread is going to take care of the other zombie behind the first one that we shot. That fucker's still alive. I can't stay here. Can't even swim. 
Carlos, respond. Yeah, what's up? We didn't make it. The train derailed. Derailed? Was anyone hurt? No, everybody's dead. Mihail, everybody. Ah, oh, shit. Nikolai left us to die. Wait, what? What the fuck? Get back! Jill! Jill, what happened? Jill, come in! So we're gonna start out with equipping some flame rounds. I'm gonna let you in on a little trick. Nemesis will always take hit stun from a flame grenade if he's not on fire, but he won't take hit stun if he is already on fire. So stagger out your flame rounds and you will shut down Nemesis pretty easily. I should also let you know about another trick. Uh, the long recovery time on the grenade launcher can be uh, canceled if you swap to another weapon in between shots. It's like you can fire grenades, switch, switch to your shotgun, switch back to the grenade launcher, fire another shot pretty quickly. And the same can be done while you are swapping out your uh, ammo type. That's actually the fastest way to reload the grenade launcher is to cycle the ammo back to the grenades that you're using and then switch weapons. And it stops Jill from having to painstakingly load the grenades one by one. So you can see, like, like I did just there, just there. I cycled over, I cycled back to the flame rounds, and it started a reload animation, and then I just canceled it by switching weapons. So I just switched switched over to mine thrower rounds, equip my shotgun, equipping back to the grenade launcher. I got the mine thrower rounds ready. Whenever he breeze like that, he's going to uh, run around in a circle. And we are going to head him off at one of two places, either the top of this gate over here I'm gonna kill you. at the clock tower or that white building over there. And whenever we knock him down with a mine, we're going to shoot the parasite with shotgun shells. Then we have to fire another flame round and uh, switch back to the mine thrower rounds. Got to make sure that our shotgun is reloaded too. It's uh, pretty tough to juggle all of this. So if you're not immediately firing any ammo or any bullets, try to be mindful of what you need to have queued up next. Like for instance, right here, I need to have flame rounds. And a flame round, we already shot a flame round, so we know he's going to run around the arena again. So I swapped over to mine thrower rounds. And after we fire the mine thrower round, I'm going to switch back over to a flame grenade. Well, not this time, because this is actually the last phase, but... Boom, 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 boom. I let the aggravated damage finish him off. So before we move on, we're going to pick up as much ammo as we can. By the way, a little known fun fact, if you don't have the grenade launcher and you're in the middle of that fight, then you'll still get that cutscene anyway. I decided to uh, waste a mine or a flame round there so that I'd be able to pick up more mine thrower rounds because the mine thrower rounds are actually pretty good against the stronger enemies at, towards the end of the game. 
Then we're going to refill our shotgun shells. We still have that uh, gunpowder from earlier. From all the way back in the sewers, I guess. Where did I pick that one up? Tyrell, do you copy? What's going on? Jill's been infected. I... I'm taking her to the hospital. Maybe Dr. Bard can save her. All right, I'll meet you there. You hang in there, Super Cop. I got you. vaccine. You gonna be okay? Tyrell, where's Bard now? Gotta be the lab in the back. Stay frosty, I'm on my way. Copy. I'll go on ahead. I don't got time for this! So the way I like to ration out Carlos's ammo here... Rationing out your ammo is uh, kind of important. Is usually I like to use the machine gun to, or sorry, the assault rifle to down these guys. Also, pay attention to that zombie's feet. Like, what the fuck? It's like he was trying to step up and get on the get on the bench over there. I guess zombies can do that in this room, huh? But in general, it's just it's just for the better to use the assault rifle to down these guys and then shoot them in the face with a handgun. He reached outward, stabbed him in Stabbed him in the head just to make sure they wouldn't move again. But yeah, just trying to shoot every body in here because it will get up. Not every dead body is going to be a zombie in Resident Evil 3, but in this room, everything is a everything is a zombie. Every dead body turns into a zombie, so it's better to just clear those guys out in advance. Please state your business clearly into the intercom. So here's a uh, trick with this room over here. As long as we uh, step back into Dr. Bard's office, 
then we can actually get the zombies to move back to their tethers. So they start to move towards us a little too close. All we gotta do is just step barely out of range, then they'll move back. So those guys are all down. Then all we gotta do is worry about uh, Barbara Streisand over here. I actually recommend just firing 10 shots into her head. It's more than enough to kill her. Dr. Barbara Streisand is uh, pretty annoying. The way she moves. For this one, we're just going to fire five, six, seven, seven focus shots into that zombie's head. That's actually a zombie. And it has an HP value, and if you fire seven shots focused into its head, then that is exactly enough to deplete all of its HP. No response, it is dead. Next up, we're going to go into this uh, reception room over here. Before these other zombies bust out, we're going to hit this safe, and the code is 93. Opening the safe will get you an extended mag. Then we're going to jump out this first window over here on the left. Directly to the right, there's the tactical grip for the assault rifle. And we'll jump over here. There's the key to the staff room. Some more assault rifle ammo right there. We'll be headed upstairs. There's an autosave right there. You know, some bad shit's about to happen. I think you can actually shoot that hunter. Possibly. A little foreshadowing there. If we pop into the save room here, we can get an additional 20 assault rifle bullets. Gotta try to pick up every assault rifle pickup that we can. Next, we'll grab this ammo, and then we're going to unlock the door. We start throwing things out, throwing key items out. Your inventory is probably full by now. Yeah, you know, even though I picked up that extra uh, that extra side pack I wasn't supposed to pick up, I don't think I ever used it. wind up looking like a fucking predator. So we're going to toss a uh, flash grenade and just be shooting that one in the head. And when we run out of ammo, we're going to combine the rest of the attachments with the assault rifle. Or you can do what I did and just be a complete fucking idiot. You can actually haymaker counter with uh, Carlos. Because, you know, Carlos doesn't have a dodge action. He just has, he just has a uh, haymaker that he can counter attack with. When we're at zero ammunition, if we combine with the uh, assault rifle, we get 64 Jesus bullets. Christ. Which is what I should have done to begin with. I guess what happened was I combined that tactical grip instead of the banana clip, thinking that it was the banana clip. Whatever. My brain works like shit sometimes. It's not even a banana clip, it's an extended mag. God damn it, pass Carsey.
Got a lucky crit on that zombie, so I'm gonna move over there and finish her off. She ain't getting back up. I'm gonna manually equip this grenade because we don't really need to hotkey it. I'm just gonna roll that grenade in there, and if we're lucky, we're gonna hit both the hunters. Both the hunters are going to crowd to the door and we can just pop the door open and just start shooting. So we got one. Where's the other? He went back to his tether. So now we can shoot him in the back and kill him because the grenade did full damage to both of them. If the grenade does not do full damage, then that second hunter by the cassette tape is going to be alive, at which point you're just going to keep ducking out and re-entering the room to uh, cheese him and keep shooting him until he's dead. There's another box of assault rifle ammo that I almost missed. While those zombies are busting out, we're going to use the hospital ID card, run into this operating theater over here, and grab everything we can. Then we're going to unload on these guys. yippee ki -yay, motherfuckers. Do a quick body check, because these zombies can come back. When we run through here with Jill to uh, pick up everything that we missed. So, got to make sure that they're dead. And I mean dead. Also, what's funny is if you uh, keep using the intercom, then... Uh Dr. Bard, are you in there? I'm here to rescue you. All I wanted Open to know the was door. what the documents were doing in your office in the first place. Who do you think you're talking to? I'm goddamn Nathaniel Bard. I'm the best biologist you'll ever meet, you bedpan-changing waste of a nursing degree. Of course I have connections higher up. Of course the military consults with me on projects beyond your comprehension. So stop wasting my time with your nosy questions. I... Uh, I'm sorry, Doctor. You didn't read the documents, did you? No, I shredded them just like you asked. Good. Good. If that's all, you can go back to wiping your patient's ass. That's what they pay you for, right? And polish my shoes. Yes, sir. I bet you know a lot about polishing, don't you? Now fuck off and don't say a word to anyone. Wow. What a douche. So as I was saying, if you keep using the intercom, then Carlos will actually try to impersonate Dr. Bard to try to get in. It's pretty funny. Bard. Tyrell. Bard's dead. He's been shot. Shit. And the vaccine? I'm looking. Well, look harder. There's got to be a computer, right? This is VRC Chief Nathaniel Bard. September 29. 11 p.m. I am acutely aware that my time's running out. And I hope and pray, by making this recording and bringing the truth to light, that I can restore some small shred of honor to my name. All of Raccoon City's suffering began with the release of a biological weapon known as the T-Virus. My employer, the Umbrella Corporation, engineered this virus. And they ordered my team to develop a vaccine, which we did. Now, I keep samples of this vaccine here in my office. The rest of it is stored underground. But those sons of bitches at the board, they want to destroy it. They don't want the world to know what they've done. So they're trying to erase all evidence that the virus ever existed. No, I'm not a fool. I know they don't want me to... I got you, Luan Wong. 
and she trusted me anyway. Fuck! Make sure you throw a grenade as soon as you exit the door. As soon as the camera decides to pan towards where the hunter is jumping down, throw a flash grenade immediately and then bolt. Only a day away. There's still people in the city. You think Uncle Sam gives a shit? Fuck. Here they come. Oh, you sit tight. I got this. Better grab some gear. Something. I'm gonna try to lower the window shutters. The less entry points, the better. And how do we do that? I'll try hacking into the hospital security system. Keep them off me in the meantime. I actually messed up here. I was supposed to save before this. So yeah, we're going to discard all of those key items that we haven't discarded. Now the and pick up every single item on the map while the zombies are busting in. So about eight shots per zombie for the first half until the uh, breaker goes out. The handgun is uh, very, very slightly stronger than the assault rifle. Throughout this first section, we can uh, go ahead and use the handgun in order to try to save up on just a little bit of ammo. But yeah, it's like the same, you know, seven, eight shots, something like that. We just, we can just keep laying into them while they're on the ground because they take forever to get up. Fortunately, this whole section isn't that bad. It only gets bad when the, uh, when the nemesis parasites are on the field. But as long as you're doing constant DPS to the enemies, even when there's a nemesis parasite dropping down and it actually like spawns on their heads, you will uh, still reduce their HP down to one and all you would have to do is just score a shot on the parasite and kill them. So right about here, 
What I recommend is keeping your back towards the door that the hunter busts out of, because it won't inflict hit stun, it won't inflict damage. But I always toss a grenade as soon as the hunter enters the room, and then grab the hand grenades and uh, flash grenades there. We're going to come across our first uh, any alpha parasite here. Just get rid of it. You can see I shot it like seven, eight times as it was coming down. And it took one more shot to basically finish off the parasite because you can't kill it until the parasite is spawned. But you can still reduce its HP and just like get the work done before that. From this point on, the zombies have more HP. They have like about 373 HP. So as you can imagine on uh, Inferno difficulty, if you aren't using Assault Coins, it's going to be kind of a pain in the ass. But we're still going to shoot as many zombies as we see spawn. The uh, any alpha parasites are completely vulnerable while they're going in through the window, by the way. It's when they get up that they will start to protect themselves. You can still use the uh, reload trick for Carlos's assault rifle here. If you, I, I, I don't do it in this video, but whenever you see the the number flash green while you're reloading, you can just swap your gun. So there's that blue shirt zombie. That's basically an indication that the hunter is going to pop through next. Whenever you see that, whenever you see that female zombie with the with the blue shirt, just watch out. We're gonna bank a grenade there and kill the hunter. And the last threat, the last actual threat of this whole section is done and over with. But yeah, when you see that blue shirt zombie second window from the left, get ready to shoot that generator so that you can stun the hunter and kill it. So we got flash grenades, we got generators. There's really not a whole lot to do. When these guys are done being stunned, we can just yeet a grenade. Red light. Green light. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Red light. It's over. I'm coming back. Vaccine's the real deal. Good. You going somewhere? You're damn right. What do you think you're gonna do? Whole city's about to be microwaved. Come on, man. Call the government. Tell them we found a cure. You stall for time. Ballsy motherfucker. It's over now. The city's safe.
Where am I? What's going on? Attention all citizens. The missile strike on Raccoon City will occur in just hours. The payload is designed to eradicate all biological material. You will not survive if you remain in the city. October 1st. Evacuate now. Repeat. No. Evacuate it can't now. Be. This is not a test. Shoutouts to avoiding the puddle for the raid. Morning, sunshine. You saved my life. I sure as shit didn't. That was all Carlos. He carried you here and he treated you himself. Crazy bastard. Where is he? He went underground. Bard stockpiled the vaccine, enough to give the city some hope. He thinks he can do this by himself. I'm going after him. Wait, did you see the broadcast? They're gonna blow the city sky high. I'm trying to get a hold of someone, anyone with the clearance to stop it. Leave this mess to him. He's a professional. So am I. Right. Guess I'm not talking you out of this. The storage facility is underground beneath this hospital. I've lost contact with Carlos. So expect the trouble. Now we got a pretty long save. Leading up to the final bosses. So in order to uh, be able to collect everything that we need to collect here, we have to unlock all these padlocks in a specific order. We're going to start by unlocking the forbidden door, as it's referred to. Then we're going to head over to this uh, box over here. There's going to be some magnum rounds in it, but we're not going to grab said magnum rounds quite so soon. After that, we're going to... head out and around. We're not going to go into Bard's office just yet. Gotta have our mine thrower rounds equipped. Like I said, those extra mine thrower rounds come in real handy fighting against uh, some of the beefier enemies here, specifically the hunters. We just pop out. If you pop into that little uh, red light area, I guess that uh, I guess that sanitation or whatever that 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 clean room. What's supposed to be a clean room? If we pop in there, then the hunter's AI will actually get messed up and you can actually, like, just cheese them that way. We're gonna walk over here. There's gonna be another hunter over here. What's funny is, like, these guys don't really, like, duck under your grenades. Well, rather, your mine thrower rounds if you're firing off mine thrower rounds. The way that I route my ammo for this, I don't really need to pick up these extra shotgun shells, generally. But if I do it this way, I can save on maybe a grenade or two. I got too many regular explosive rounds, so we're going to use those on these guys. to get them out of our way so that we can get more magnum rounds with this high-grade gunpowder over here. Yeah. Next, we'll head in here. We'll unlock this other padlock over here in order to start stocking up on magnum rounds now that we have used the lockpick the maximum number of times. We can just go ahead and get rid of the lockpick start stocking up our magnum rounds and uh, if we go to the right there's a uh, explosive A but I actually didn't need to grab that explosive A I just wanted to I I can squeeze by. grab some gunpowder B or some sorry some uh, explosive B I keep forgetting it's called explosive B in this game explosive powder and gunpowder 
are completely different things in this game. You need to get explosive bees in order to be able to mix up acid rounds to use against hunters in the lab later. Guaranteed to give you a headache. Now we got uh, two inventory slots free. We can make our way back over to the clean room over here. Grab these uh, explosive rounds. Then pick up the explosive B so it's right there in our inventory and we can just combine it, get the acid rounds directly. At the end of the hall, going back, are the magnum rounds from the chest we opened just earlier. Now that we have an inventory slot dedicated specifically to magnum rounds, it's good to pick those up now. That guy is going to come around the corner. We're just going to pop him. Kapow. It's exactly enough time for us to dodge through, pop open the door, get going. Before we head underground, there's the explosive B. Combine that. We got more acid rounds. Sometimes the Magnum will decapitate the Hunter. Well, not really decapitate, but kill the Hunter in one shot. But that's like only if you are able to score a shot in the face. How is it no one in the hospital ever noticed all this? Last side pack of the game right there. Some more explosive A if you want it, but I wouldn't recommend it. I must admit, I respect your tenacity, but I'm afraid our games end here. You think this is over? Two shotgun shells are enough to kill that pale head. If he starts to get up, then give him a third. There will be plenty of opportunity to replenish shotgun shells later, so don't be too worried if you waste one or two. Like this, for instance. These random item boxes over here contain shotgun shells. So after picking up this fuse, I'm going to go back down and plop it in, then head back up. Equip the shotgun here. After the first explosion, just gotta get ready to pop this guy. Another dog is gonna come up here. Jumped right into our crosshairs. Next up, we're gonna round this corner over here and blam. We're not going to hit the elevator here just yet. We're just going to raise this one. Another high-grade gunpowder there, which we can combine to get some more magnum rounds in the laboratory. Yeah! 
there is yet another high grade in this room with these with these zombies over here, but it's pointless to go through because if we stick around too long, then that's going to plop down. And we'd have to get around that Hunter Gamma as well. Thank Christ that's the last Hunter Gamma we see. Pull this lever over here and send us down and get the ninth gun upgrade over here. Which is going to be a shell rack for our shotgun. It'll let us reload faster. Two shots at two shots at a time. Two zombies in a pale head here. I'm not even worried about decapitating that zombie there. Just uh, downing him so that I can take down the pale head. That shotgun shell was enough to take down all of his HP. Actually, I needed to uh, combine that high grade over there. We gotta wait for the hunter to be done jumping off of objects in order for the uh, stun effect of the acid round to take effect. But whenever you pop a hunter with an acid round, if you follow up with a shotgun shell, then the aggr aggravated damage from the acid round is going to be what kills the hunter. The shotgun just reduces its ammo. You can plop a mine thrower dart between all of these zombies over here, but you have to wait for it to detonate before jumping down. And as you can see, I did no such thing. I just decided to stay far away. But because the parasites were still there, they were still alive, and... I just decided to finish them off with grenade rounds. The tenth and final upgrade. The tenth and final weapon upgrade is for the Magnum. It's right there. Just combine it straight up. And Q cutscenes. Joe. Tyrell. I got through. They're willing to negotiate. Ah. Oh. They'll call off the strike if, and this is one big ass if, we can deliver the vaccine to them before they launch. How long do we have? Hours, maybe. Then let's not waste one more second. This way. We'll find the vaccine up ahead. Need to stop? Stop and do what? I got your back. All right, let's get this done.
override key successfully generated. What have we here? Override key removed. So after grabbing the override key, we're going to combine the barrel with the magnum, use the override key. The zombie we're going to decapitate there, and then we're going to start using focus shots on these pale heads here. Just kapow. Kapow. We have to try to save at least 12 magnum rounds for the final boss. Kapow. Getting rid of her because she could potentially get up and follow us out. Want to remove her from the equation? I don't like random variables. I might be able to use this to synthesize the vaccine. Palehead fell out of that. Uh, out of that assembly line conveyor belt thing, whatever. So I'm going to move back up the stairs here because I forgot to waste him. Going to give him the old Kapowie too. Right in the head. There's also some uh, explosive powder over there. But I'm not getting that because... I need to keep inventory space free. This must be what powers it. Get rid of the zombie next to the battery before pushing the battery. Obviously. Mind thrower rounds next. This is a particularly annoying mob. A zombie. Too many alphas. Oh, I almost, almost, almost. Got waxed by that one. Okay, it melted away. Just had to make sure. All we got to worry about now is the pale head, but this guy's gonna troll the fuck out of us because the movement in this game is so weird, it even applies to the animations of certain zombies. So he's just like darting back and forth in front of the door because the game can't correct the zombie's movement in order for it to move in a straight line out the goddamn door. So we have to wait for this zombie to keep moving left and right until it decides, oh, I'm going to cancel my walking cycle and move out this way or move around in a circle until I get the right angle that allows me to move outside this way. It's like an RC car that turns in reverse. You know, those, those, those fucking shits that you hated to get for Christmas as a kid because you can only turn them in reverse. God damn. We'll combine the gunpowder B with the gunpowder A, or the explosive B with the explosive A to get some uh, flame rounds over here. Because we can use those for the second to last boss fight coming up. Gonna equip the acid rounds, get our acid rounds, get our shotgun ready.
when hunters pop out, I try to hit both of them at the same time. And uh, remember to cycle my guns in order to cancel the recoil of the grenade launcher. Or rather, the uh, reload of the grenade launcher. Reload, recoil, not even sure. But the four acid rounds that I have here are specifically for this room. Especially on like the harder difficulties, having acid rounds here is an absolute must because it allows you to just lock down the hunter immediately and kill it. I was confused here for a minute because I was wondering why I only had one of these, but the music was like... the same music that you get whenever you have the fully assembled vaccine. But I had the vaccine base. We're good to go. Come on, Pass Carsey. You're at the goal. Take this high-grade gunpowder here. More magnum rounds. Next to the save point. To begin vaccine synthesis, place the materials in the chamber. The solution is all the same. Mid, high, low. in the save room here. Just going to uh, combine our high-grade gunpowders, mix it all together, grab our flame rounds, and uh, there's going to be some what more flame rounds this place? in this case over here. Then we're going to make our final save right here. Load up our flame rounds, make our final save. Alternatively, you can also get rid of the mine darts. Actually, you don't even really need the uh, the mine round for this fight. The reason why I had the mine round, mine round was so that I could get Nemesis on his ass a little easier. At least that was my first strategy, but while I was experimenting with this fight, I decided to get rid of that.
Nikolai, don't! The city needs that vaccine! More than I do. Hmm. I don't think the wisdom uh, I've been trying to impart on you is getting through. Uh, now I know you can't put a price on life. But I'm in this business to get paid. So let's make a deal. You go down there, battle the nemesis, and I'll recall it all and sell the combat art. Put on a good show and maybe I don't need the vaccine. Agreed? Good. So same as the last fight, we're going to open with a flame round because that is going to stun him as long as he is not on fire. We're going to cycle in between flame rounds and explosive rounds. Basically just stagger it out, wait for him to not be stunned anymore, but you can keep chaining explosive rounds and keep stun locking him actually. want to grab that box of shotgun shells that we just strafed around to get. Yeah, in general, just uh, stand your ground. You got the advantage. Just swap swap it between explosive rounds, flame rounds, and... Uh... Jill, is that you? Carlos? You're okay. Let me spot for you. Good idea. When Nemesis gets down to 80% HP, he's going to be like this, so... He's going to do a stun roar and fuck you, eat flame rounds instead. And now he's going to run around. I would normally place a mind dart between 5 and 6, but I really wanted more grenade rounds for this fight in order to increase my chances of survival against the zombies. So while I'm here, I'm just going to use the handgun to pop that. And I can put in maybe about 5 shotgun shells here. Not too bad, but we still got flame rounds equipped. We got to be ready to shoot him, basically as soon as uh, as soon as he gets up. Yeah. I got lucky there, actually. I probably wasn't supposed to keep those flame rounds equipped, but I was busy having my attention on that zombie there. Just always remember, alternate between expl explosive rounds and flame rounds. Because it'll allow you to get more and more damage before he actually starts uh, running around, jumping on top of the furniture and shit. Here comes some more. Number two. And in this phase, Carlos is going to attack him for me, so while we're waiting for that. Not what I intended to hit. I'll take it. We're just going to take care of all the zombies, wait for Nemesis to get back up. And uh, when he charges, we're just going to pop him with a flame round. Boom. Got lucky. That was actually the start of a jumping animation. If you hit Nemesis with a grenade while he's jumping, then it'll reveal the parasite early. I made a mistake there. I probably shouldn't have pulled out the shotgun. I should have just cycled over to my explosive rounds while I had the chance. Still getting used to this strategy. But in my runs with boxes, I'm certainly going to have a whole lot more explosive rounds and flame rounds for this fight. Keep this motherfucker on lock. Yeah, you can see, explosive round, boom, stopped him right in his tracks. Explosive rounds always cause hit stun. Always, always, always. Flame round, always be ready for his fire to go out. Sometimes if you're lucky, if you hit him with a grenade there, you can actually get him to fall down, and... What even did I do there? Here comes a crane. Use it to climb up. I guess he was at zero HP.
Nikolai, where did you go? I have to get that vaccine back. So this is what we've been saving the Magnum for, boys. It's done. Give me the vaccine, you greedy son of a bitch. No, 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 no. You print money. I like money. We shall make ours an ongoing arrangement. Now drop the gun! This would be worth millions. But, well, you know how it is. City's about to explode, and you can't put a price on life. <laughs> Good luck! Nikolai! Jill! Go after Nikolai. He's got the vaccine. What about you? We're running out of time. I've got this. I know you do. Look, just so you know, this is the last fucking time. So the fight starts. We're just going to grab the rail cannon. Such an unfortunate boss fight. So the first phase is always going to have three polyps that we got to shoot, and for the third polyp, we're going to delay it until we're right next to the first battery. After that, we start pushing the battery immediately because that maximizes the amount of time we got for us to go and push the second battery. Meanwhile, we're going to reload our gun. It is possible to do this on Inferno difficulty, but there is a variation in the strategy, and the timing is really, really tight. So after that, just push this last battery, then we can run to the cannon and kill him. The fight is over. Good riddance. And this was Resident Evil 3 Remake, no damage, no item box, S rank on hardcore difficulty. So the next video that I upload will absolutely be an Inferno mode run. Probably going to wind up using some bonus items because I want to create like a walkthrough that's like easy for people to follow. Oh, I can still catch him. But I also want to do some stuff with like no bonus items eventually, just like not now. 
Enjoy the ending. You're not going to stop me. Promised you this, didn't I? No! Do you have any idea what you've just done? No, no. Don't care. My client ordered me to reduce umbrella to rub. Ten minutes until missile ah. impact. The missile has launched. And that is my cue. Goodbye, Miss Valentine. Shame you didn't listen to me when you had the chance. Shoot him! I can't! I'll hit you! Do it! You have to! There's no other way! This world. That would just be too cruel. What about him? Why'd you do it? There's a price tag for everything. Even letting the world burn. Who are you working for? I'll tell you, if you get me out of here, I'll pay you whatever you want. You're a fool. You're a fool! If I die, you'll never find out the truth. I don't mind a little detective work. over. I felt empty and cold as the heat from the blast washed over us. All this death wasn't caused by a monster-making virus. It was greed. Human greed. I decided then and there, the ashes of Raccoon City would be Umbrella's ashes too. I would end them, once and for all.